All right, PoE, we're going to continue working towards our uh, inputs programming. I believe this is 3.1.3. We left off last time on part five uh, of the uh, uh, principles of engineering sheet um, from the Project Lead the Way website. It starts with like number 27, 28, 29. Um, and we had last time using a bump switch. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to clear that code out. I'm going to check and make sure that everything looks okay on my test bed. Uh, it looks like none of the wires have been moved around. The green LEDs are showing up on both, and I've got a battery hooked up to it, and the USB cable is plugged in, unlike last time, whenever I figured out that that wasn't exactly on there. Uh, so we're going to continue moving on, and it looks like this time we're going to be messing with the servo and the line follower. So we're going to have to put in a couple of... Uh, pieces of code. So I'm going to go over here to the natural language section and I'm going to go to movement and it looks like I have one that says set servo. So I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to drag it over. So I have set servo and I have to tell it what port that it actually uses. Whenever I look up at the top, it says that the uh, port is, let's see here, servo motor or port nine. So I'm going to just type in servo motor. And the position that it tells me to go to is 127. So I'm going to put that servo position to 127. And then it looks like they want us to use a sensor uh, using the line tracker. So I'm going to go from the natural language section. I'm going to go to until. And there's a whole bunch of different options. I'm looking for the one that has until light. So this one, um, let's see, says the robot does what it was doing until the light sensor, oops, reads a value lighter than the threshold. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this one down here, and I'm going to type in the threshold that it tells me to put in. So the threshold is 1425, and the sensor port is the one that says, uh, which one is a line? It's the line follower. It's input one. So let's type in line follower. I'm going to have to make sure that that's capitalized for me because that's the way that I named it up here at the top. Next, uh, it says set servo to negative uh, 127 and then wait two seconds. So we're going to go set servo uh, and then servo motor and I have mine capitalized and I'm going to make that negative 127 and then I'm going to finish with a semicolon and then I'm going to wait for two seconds and then in with a semicolon all right so once again this thing will only work once it's going to set the servo to 127 this is the servo right here it's going to set it to 127 and then until this value actually gets a light value so uh 1425 now remember whenever we have the uh light values let's see if i can find my uh thing that i used last time i don't think i here it is so this has a dark side and this has a light side to it. Whenever we put the dark side up on top of it, it gives a really high value. If you use the light side, it actually gives it a really low value. So what we'll be doing is we'll be passing this over here until it gets a light value. So up on the top, just like having things just sit out here, it should be registering above that value. I don't know. Let's try it and see. I'm going to hit compile the program. Looks like there's no explosions, no yellow X's or red X's. So that means that everything was done correctly. If you get yellow X's, make sure that you've actually got the capitalization, capitalization set right. Uh, if you have red X's, make sure you didn't do any syntax errors like having a semicolon at the end. Uh, you, or, or make sure you have a semicolon at the end. I'm going to hit download to robot and let it do its thing. And then we're going to hit the start button. It looks like I've got my line follower immediately has a value of 3030. So I'm going to hit start. And immediately whenever I hit start, the servo moved to its 127 position. This is a servo, so it doesn't spin around. It actually just moves from one location to another location. And it's going to, and even whenever I put my hand over the line follower, the values uh, don't really change that much. In order to actually get the values to change, you're going to have to get really close to the line tracker. And see, whenever I switched it over, it moved. And then it waited two seconds. And after it waited two seconds, it seemed to have gone back to its original position. So now, anytime I try to move the line tracker value below that value, 
it doesn't do anything anymore. It's already ran every single line of code, and if you want to do it again, you're going to have to restart it. So when you hit start, it moves to its initial position. There is a, uh, a high value right here because there's nothing for the line tracker to, to follow. And if I take a light object, it won't take long for us to get this to flip over. So if I move this down, okay, as soon as I move it to that location, it's going to move over to its position. And it only does that, so it sets that to its position. And after the wait two seconds, it seems to go back to its normal location. Okay, um, let's see here. And, and that's, that's that one. That one's using the, the line follower. Okay, and on the next one, uh, it says to modify your program to perform the pseudocode below. And it says to move the servo to position 127 until a dark object is detected, and then move to move the servo to position 127. Okay, so a dark object would be something like this. And if I look at the line follower, uh, the dark values are going to give something that is, um, look at that, like 2,000 or 1,900 to 2,000 that goes along with it. So uh, if you do a light object, then that value goes down a whole lot. Okay, so uh, we're, we're looking for uh, higher values if you're going to use a dark object. So um, it looks like the values that begin originally are 3,000, and then whenever we put a dark object on there, it goes only down to like 2,400. Okay, so dark objects give high values, and light objects give really small values. So light object, looking at about 100-ish. Okay, so um, let's try to modify this. I'm going to go ahead and close this out, and we'll see if we can actually get it to do what it's supposed to do. So we want it to move to servo position 127 at the very beginning, which it kind of looks like that's what it already does, uh, until a dark object is detected. And a dark object will go to about the 2000s. So why don't we change this 1400? Let's just make it go up a little bit to 2000. And then we'll make it move to uh, servo position 127. Okay. And then we'll have it wait for two seconds. And then uh, from there, what we'll do is we will let's see, check my battery. Uh oh, looks like we're almost out of battery, so we'll have to let it we'll have to let it go from here. I'm gonna try to compile the program really quick and download to the robot and let's see if this actually works by setting it at a higher value. So I'm gonna hit the start button. It goes to its position 127. And then if I were to try to use like a dark object and put the dark object on there. It looks like it's not going to take it yet. So in our code, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to modify that to make the number go up a little bit more because that dark object isn't quite, so it looks like I'm getting values around 26, 2700. So we'll just need to modify this line of code right here to go a little bit higher, and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so in your code, make those modifications, and then uh, you guys have a great day, and I'll go through the next part as soon as my camera gets more battery.